This is quite massive. This new paper, Kolmogorov Arnold Networks, or CAN in short, is coming as a promising alternative to multi layer perceptrons or MLPs for approximating non linear functions. Now, we all know that for decades, MLPs has actually ruled the world of neural network, but this is almost kind of the first time a technique is being proposed which can dethrone MLP from its position. And the key technique proposed in this paper is that while MLPs place activation functions on neurons, but can we instead place learnable activation functions on weights? And the answer is yes, we can. And that's a whole concept of this paper, which is moving activation function from nodes, that is neurons, to edges, that is weights. So again, unlike MLPs, which have fixed activation functions on nodes, the CAN technique have learnable activation function parameterized as splines on edges. This allows CAN to achieve higher accuracy and parameter efficiency compared to the regular multilayer perceptrons. And this is inspired by the representation theorem. So the paper explicitly parameterize the Kolmogorov arnold representation with neural networks. In honor of the two great late mathematicians, Andra, Andri Kolmogorov and Vladimir Arnold, uh, the researcher of this paper, call this technique Kolmogorov arnold networks. So from the math mathematical aspects, MLPs are inspired by the Universal Approximation Theory or UAT, while CAN are inspired by the kolmogorov arnold representation theorem. Uh, can a network achieve infinite accuracy with a fixed width? UAT, that is uh, Universal Approximation Theorem, says no, while this kolmogorov arnold representation theorem says yes, it can. And that's what the difference is. And from the algorithmic perspective, CANs and MLPs are dual in the sense that MLPs have usually fixed activation functions on neurons, while CANs have learnable activation functions on weights. These one-dimensional activation functions are parameterized as splines. And from practical aspects, we find that um, uh, the CANs are more accurate and interpretable than MLPs, although we have to be honest that CANs are slower to train due to their learnable activation functions. And from neural scaling laws, CANs have much faster scaling than MLPs, which is mathematically grounded in the kolmogorov arnold representation theorem. So CAN scaling exponent can also be achieved empirically. And if you just look at uh, the very definition, that is a formula uh, between the UAT, Universal Approximation Theorem, and the CAN, then you will see that the kolmogorov arnold representation theorem states that any continuous function of n variables can be represented as a composition of 2n plus 1 univariate functions. The paper generalizes this to CANs of arbitrary widths and depths. A CAN layer with n input and n outputs is defined as a matrix of learnable one-dimensional spline function. And deep CANs are constructed by stacking multiple such layers. And the paper also talks about the implementation details. So um, the, key, the key tricks for implementations uh, for optimizing CANs are about using residual activation functions that are a sum of basis function, for example, CLU and a learnable splines. And about the performance of CANs versus MLPs, uh, on various experiments, including regression, then PDE, that is partial differential equation solving, and continual learning, CAN demonstrates superior accuracy and parameter efficiency compared to MLPs. On uh, the interpretability of CANs, uh, that is highlighted through techniques like uh, sparsification, pruning, and symbolic simplification of the learned splines. On real-world applications in knot theory and condensed matter physics, CANs are able to uncover known relations and phase transition in a transparent manner, with the potential for scientific discovery through human-AI collaboration using uh, the language of CANs. And that's really a massive uh, advantages of CANs.
Overall, CAN provides a very powerful and interpretable alternative to MLPs by leveraging the kolmogorov arnold theorem and spline approximations, uh, demonstrating state-of-the-art performance on range of tasks along with favorable scaling behavior and unique capabilities for interactivity and knowledge discovery, like the one that I just mentioned, that is uh, uh, CAN's applicability in the world of physics. And the researchers also found that uh, a CAN's natural ability to avoid catastrophic forgetting, at least in a toy case. So this is the graph that they are uh, they are showing for this performance aspect of CAN. A toy continual learning problem. The dataset is a one-dimensional regression task with five Gaussian peaks. Data around each peak is presented sequentially instead of all at once to CAN's and MLPs. And can, that is a middle row right here, can perfectly avoid catastrophic forgetting, while MLPs, that is the bottom row, display several catastrophic forgetting, severe catastrophic forgetting. So talking more on these, because catastrophic forgetting is such a topic of focus uh, in the industry for acceptability of large language models. So catastrophic forgetting is a serious problem in current machine learning. When a human masters a task and switches to another task, they do not forget how to perform the first task. Unfortunately, this is not the case for neural network. When a neural network is trained on task one and then shifted to being uh, shifted to another task two, the network will soon forget about how to perform task one. A key difference between artificial neural networks and human brain is that human brains have functionally distinct modules placed locally in space. When a new task is learned, a structure reorganization only occurs in local regions responsible for relevant skills, leaving other regions intact. Most artificial neural networks, including MLPs, do not have this notion of locality, which is probably the reason for catastrophic forgetting. And uh, we showed that the that cons have uh, local plasticity and can avoid catastrophic forgetting by leveraging the locality of splines. The idea is simple. Since splines, spline bases are local, a sample will only affect a few nearby spline coefficients, leaving far away coefficients intact, which is desirable since far away regions may have already stored information that you want to preserve. By contrast, since MLPs usually use global activations, for example, ReLU, TANH, CLU, any local change may propagate uncontrollably to regions far away, destroying the information being stored there. Fantastic. So if Khan can actually solve this uh, catastrophic forgetting problem, this is going to change massively the world of uh, large language models. Let's see how it uh, goes within the next few months. And I also want to talk about another aspect of CANS, that is its impact on the embedding vectors. So the CAN paper allows for the possibility of more expressive internal activations, which means that each value flowing through the network can theoretically express more meaning. This means that embedding vectors could be able to express more information using fewer dimension. And here are a few points uh, about this claim that why embedding from CANs can be more expressive. So the, the CAN replaces the fixed activation functions on nodes in the regular MLPs with learnable activation functions on edges, which you already pointed out. So these learnable spline activation function in CANs provide additional expressive power compared to fixed activation like ReLU or TANH in MLP. The splines can accurately fit complex one-dimensional function. And then the next point, the universal approximation theorem, which is behind the regular MLPs, guarantees that MLPs can approximate any continuous function. But CANs are instead inspired by the more powerful kolmogorov arnold representation theorem. This theorem states that any multivariate function can be exactly represented by a composition of univariate functions and additions. And uh, so can generalize the kolmogorov arnold representation to arbitrary widths and depths, resulting in the deeper can can achieve much smoother representation. And then uh, since can factorize a higher dimensional function into a composition of one dimensional function, 
each individual activation can express rich local information about the target function. In contrast, activation in multi-layer perceptrons only capture very coarse thresholded information. So the last point is the high expressivity of individual activations in CANs means the network can learn meaningful representation and achieve high accuracy with smaller architectures compared to MLPs. For example, the paper shows a two-layer width 10 CAN outperforms a four-layer width 100 MLP by 100x on a partial differential equation problem. Now let's also see uh, the points about how uh, CAN's uh, superior parameter efficiency is a huge benefit compared to MLPs, uh, the, that is compared to regular MLPs. So the paper demonstrates that CANs uh, can achieve significantly higher accuracy than MLPs with much fewer parameters. And this significant parameter efficiency could translate to needing less training data because as the number of parameters in a model is often related to its capacity to learn from and memorize the training data. So with fewer parameters, CAN may be able to learn more efficiently from a given data set, potentially requiring less data to achieve the same performance as an MLP. And this, if this really happens, it will change the training space completely because even now today, apart from the very big companies, most of the rest of the companies and regular consumer people like us cannot train a model because it's hugely compute hungry. So if the compute needs can be reduced by this new technique, then that will be a game changer. And also remember the current state-of-the-art large language models are already using most of the data available from the internet. So CAN has super potential to alleviate the data bottleneck faced by current large language models. The paper's uh, theoretical analysis of CAN's approximation bounds, which are independent of the input dimension and avoid the curse of dimensionality, suggests that CANs may be particularly well suited for scaling to high dimensional problems like natural language, natural language processing. And furthermore, the paper's uh, demonstration of CAN's interpretability and interactivity, such as the ability to uncover known relations in knot theory and phase transition in condensed, condensed matter physics, suggests that CANs could facilitate more efficient knowledge discovery and extraction from the already available data. All right, now I also want to talk about some of the uh, possible areas where more clarity is needed from the paper. So the paper proposes using learnable spline activation functions, which are parameterized by a set of trainable control points. During training, the control points are optimized to fit the target function. This allows the network to learn complex nonlinear relationships. However, the paper does not provide a clear, scalable approach for automatically selecting the optimal set of activation functions for a given problem. Recursively selecting functions during training could be challenging, especially for deep uh, cans with many layers and nodes. And one potential issue is that the space of possible activation functions is vast, and searching through all combinations of splines and other nonlinear functions may not be computationally feasible for large-scale problems. So the paper does not address these combinatorial explosion. Uh, of course, the paper mentions using machine learning techniques to select activation functions, but does not provide specific details or some experiments demonstrating the effectiveness of this approach. So definitely more research is needed to develop practical algorithms for learning the optimal set of activation functions. Because without a principled and scalable method for selecting activation functions, the performance and interpretability benefits of CANs may not fully translate to complex real-world problems. The manual effort required to tune the activation functions could limit the applicability of CANs. All right, so that being said, the paper does show uh, promising results on several benchmark problems demonstrating the potential of CANs. The learned spline function, uh, splined activation functions are able to capture very rich nonlinear relationships, but more work is needed definitely to automate the selection process.